Welcome to New Gameplay Today. I am Kyle Hilliard here with Charles Hart. What's up, Charles? Hello. I'm just, I'm excited to see Harold and his halibut, or his halibut is la- well, I'll find out from you in a second. <laughs> yeah, this is a, this is a real Max Payne, Alan Wake situation. Harold Halibut is the protagonist that you play as in this game. Um, and Charles, have you s you said you don't really know anything about this game? Have you looked at it? Have you seen it in motion or anything like that? I think I've seen, uh, I, I've seen the like GI spy picture of you, like seeing this like physical model of Harold. But other than that, like I don't know what it's about. I assume it, it looks like it's stop motion. I don't know if it actually is or it's just stylized to look like that. But yeah, I'm going in mostly blind except for the aesthetics. Cool. Yeah, so this is, it's not quite stop motion. Um, this game has been in development for like a decade. It's been in development for a really long time. I saw it many years ago and was pretty much like immediately sort of taken with it. Uh, I just really love the aesthetic. I'm a big fan of stop animation in general. You know, I like I like uh, stop animated films. I like what Leica is doing these days. And that's and that's kind of just the full aesthetic that they're going for with this game. But it is not proper stop animation, right? They did not fully animate all these characters in that traditional stop animation sense. What they did is they made uh, stop animation models, right? Mm. So they made a physical herald. Everything you see here uh, within, I, they, they, they said hey when I spoke to them recently, they said that truly like everything you see in the game is physically built in one way or another. Um, and I'm inclined to believe them. Uh, there might be little things here and there that I, I'm sure probably, you know, they didn't actually build. Like, I, I think there's some sequences that take place outside that maybe they, I don't know if they built them necessarily, but that, that's neither here nor there. What they did is they built physical things and then they scanned them, right? And then they used those scanned models to sort of animate and create this game. Mm -hmm. So... Even though it's even though they're not physically moving models to make the game, they made all the models and they scanned them and pulled them into Unity. And I think the effect is really cool. Like I really, really like the way it looks because it looks like real objects. You know, like the fabrics look real, and they look like figures that you could pick up and move around. And that's because they do exist somewhere. Right? Like they did make them. Yeah, it's a really Which, effective, like emulation of the style like i really yes. did think it was actually animated yeah um, same absolutely the first the first footage i saw of it i was like wow they're really like animating this game and so it's like they it's a good trick that they pulled off um and so that's all cool right like they from the beginning it's like okay they've got a unique style that they've absolutely established here there's not much that looks like this. I, I don't know if I can think of anything. There's, there are some clay animated games like the Neverhood, and stuff, or like old clay fighter games that have sort of a stop animation look to it. But still, this is this is very unique to me. Still, yeah. um, so that's all cool, right? They have this interesting style, but the next step of that, I guess you could say, is like the world that they've created. The the premise of the game is is interesting. In that, and I might, I'll probably get my the sort of the timelines wrong on this, but um, the idea of the game is that during uh, the nuclear scare of the '60s, a group of people left Earth, like this giant group of people left Earth on a spaceship, and they 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 went through space for like multiple generations, from what I understand. Like they were in space for like hundreds of years. And then they crash landed on this underwater planet. Like they thought the planet was like gonna be like a second Earth, you know, like kind of like a an interstellar situation. Mm -hmm. But they ended up sort of getting stuck on this planet where these storms prevent them from leaving. And so they've sort of blown out their space station over the over the centuries uh, to sort of live underwater on this planet you know, millions of miles from Earth, and they're just like this community that continues to exist. They're not really sure if Earth exists anymore. It's not really top of mind for them. They've just moved on. This is their life now. <laughs> yeah. You know? and, and then, like, the story is, like, you're Harold Halibut, who's just sort of a maintenance guy in this bizarre facility, 
and you're just kind of living your life. I I think there is a there's I I, I don't Hello. think there is a sort of larger story there. Mm. Um, uh, you know, with like. A, a beginning, middle, and end. You're not just, you know, it's it's not Animal Crossing, right? There is a right. story here, um, but I'm just, I'm all, I'm just kind of like sucked in on many different levels. Like it's a weird premise. It's a cool look. Uh, I, I, I want to know more. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. No, I was just gonna ask. They're kind of answering it in this section. I don't know. I'm so fixated on fixated on the name Harold Halibut. Are there Halibut on this, like? Planet? Uh, they're talking about groupers or super groupers. Um, um, I, it's just no, like an interesting I mean, like carryover to me of like uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't think there's like I don't know. That's a good question because it is like in this world like why why does, is Halibut his last name? Considering are, sort of the the generations that have changed here and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, there are fish. Like one of my jobs is I had to feed the fish, but I don't know if they were if they were halibut. Mm -hmm. You know, they are fishing in this underwater world and sort of staying alive that way and stuff like that. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where he gets his last name. Maybe you learn over the course of the game. <laughs> I don't know. Are there other animals? Like, do you see dogs at all in this game? Or have you? Um, I haven't yet. Now, to be clear, I've only played like an hour or two. Sure, yeah. Um, and, I, and my understanding is the game is actually is, is – pretty pretty long like there's a big story that they're mm. telling here and it's also a game that doesn't seem to mind you like making you just sort of chill and not really have a lot of um it, like uh urgency to uh -huh. anything maybe that comes later but certainly in the beginning i was just kind of like yeah i'm gonna go talk to these people i'm gonna go talk to this guy who's sort of having some trouble with his wife and i'm gonna see if i can help him out with that that doesn't really seem connected to a larger story the, it does seem like something's getting ready to happen in the sense that, like, there might be some communication with Earth, like some unexpected communication, maybe an opportunity to leave this planet that they've been stuck on for such a long period of time and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not there yet. It was, it was interesting to talk to them a couple months ago now at this point, and they were saying that like. They, they did have a, a version of the game that felt more like a traditional adventure game. Early on, that was the plan. It was like we were going to have a lot of puzzles, and you were going to have more like, you know, you do a bunch of narrative, and then you stop and do a puzzle and do more narrative. But they said as development progressed, and um, they saw games um, come out. What is, um, Charles, the, ga the name is escaping me, but the game where you play as the cat. Night in the Woods. Night in the Woods, yes. They they called they they specifically cited Night in the Woods as an uh -huh. inspiration in the sense that it's like, well, what we're doing, what we're what we think works the best here is just straight narrative. Uh -huh. So we're just gonna do that. Like we're not really gonna worry too much about puzzles and stuff like that. We're just gonna let you sort of live in this place and tell this story, which I think is interesting. Yeah, yeah. I I, I honestly like your pitch. Uh, did a lot for me in the I'd only ever seen like the image of Harold himself which was always like you know kind of a, a standard looking man like he's not he he himself is not particularly interesting which I think makes him a good fit to go through this world but the more yeah, you I tell think me by about, design yeah you know I think that's on purpose the more you tell me about like the specifics of this world the more I'm like oh yeah I would spend however many hours going around just trying to understand like what the vibe is and what's going on and uh, yeah i guess in the note of harold like it is really always interesting to me when you create these like fantastical worlds or like worlds that make you ask a lot of questions but then you get to see like what the mundane of that world is like what is the most yes. normal boring thing on this a spaceship turned underwater ship of <laughs> people that yeah. left Earth hundreds of years ago. Um, like, there's a guy, you maybe you saw it, there were some ads in a, in a place next door where they were selling, like, arc, like uh, snow equipment and stuff, and there's, like, a little ski slope tester in there, and, like, I'm, as I'm playing the game, I'm like, why are you selling this stuff? Like, it's not like you're on Earth, and there's, like, you know, you can go on a vacation to a mountain. So, like, there must be some facility like within the space station where people can like play in the snow or something. And I'm like, what is that? Like, let's look into that. You yeah. know, they wouldn't have put that there for no reason. You know? Yeah. 
I just, they don't so yeah, and, and another interesting thing about uh, speaking with them a couple months ago was that uh, they said they actually don't really have a lot of traditional game developers on the, their staff that's been working on the game for quite some time. It's mostly like artists and set designers and architects and stuff like that. Um, it's yeah. a lot of people who like the 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 final, you know, Unity is like the last. Uh, is like the finish line for them. Like everything else has been like, you know, constructing models and making sets and writing and stuff like mm. that. And that's just an interesting approach uh, to development. Yeah, I, I I think it's especially interesting that knowing that they were like, let's not add puzzles in and stuff. Like in the sense yeah. that they're like, we know what our strengths are. Let's just lean into those strengths. Um, did you ask them? I feel like, I think I read your piece about it so maybe you asked this and maybe you didn't but did you ask them why they made it a game and not a movie um i think i you know i think i talked to them a little bit about that and they're and uh the director ole tillman i mean his if i remember correctly his his response was basically like well i just i wanted to make it an interactive thing from the beginning that was the initial premise that's what i wanted to pursue you know um which is, you know, makes sense. You know, I, yeah. Double Fine gets that question sometimes of like, you guys are so funny. Why don't you just write a funny movie or something? And Double <laughs> Fine's like, because we make games. That's what we like. That's what we're here to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? And yeah, not not to say that I think a movie would be better, but it's always like the oh, thing. Oh, no, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's really cool. And I think it's a, a question worth asking. Uh, yeah, no, for sure. Intent. Absolutely. Uh, like what what makes you want to make this interactive, you know? And yeah. and to my memory, I don't think I don't remember if they had a specific answer for that or not. Yeah. Um, but uh anyway, yeah, that's a look at Harold Halibut. Like I was telling you before we started Charles, this game's like not the best for this format of video, new gameplay today, mm -hmm. because it's really just a lot of characters talking and having discussions and sort of delivering story as opposed to me talking about, you know, look at this cool move I can do, or this is how these mechanics work. But I just, because the game looks so interesting, I think it's worth showing off and sharing. I just think it looks really cool. Yeah, absolutely. I honestly, I'm just glad to have been able to like talk out what the animation process was with you to understand it a little bit more. Because I think even yeah. on paper, it, it's it's just a lot of steps that make it this, which is not difficult to understand like visually, but like the process of it is really cool. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, Harold Halibut. Uh, it's coming out on so April 16th. I believe it's coming to just about everything, uh, and I think it's even going to be on Game Pass. Oh. So keep an eye out for that. Well, thank you so much, Charles. I appreciate you taking the time. Of course. And thank you, Harold. Thank you for your help, I'll, I'll speak for Harold. Oh, <gasps> look at that. He literally said it right then and there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. We're real, we'll be